Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about learning and competence and mastering things and specifically we're going to be talking about a particular view of learning that I don't think is right and that is that some subjects or areas or pursuits are easy to learn and others are hard to learn. And I've found that if you believe this and you really invest a lot of energy into it, it's going to stop you from starting new things, it's going to stop you from completing the projects or the areas of learning that you're working on right now. And it's just going to create a, a self-fulfilling prophecy, a negative self-fulfilling prophecy that will stop you in your tracks. So I'm a bit of a learning freak, a bit of an autodidact. I've learned languages, I've learned a guitar, started my own websites and so on. And what I've found is that most people have a certain view of learning that has some truth to it, but it also makes them unable to learn. And it has them over-idealize the learning process. And when they look at me and they look at the things I've learned, they wonder how I can do it, how it can be innately amazing at learning or whatever they believe it to be. And basically the belief is that certain things are easy to learn and other things are hard to learn innately. So for example, you might think Chinese is really difficult to learn compared to French or maths is really difficult to learn compared to something like psychology or medicine is really difficult to learn when you compare it to something like political science or some other degree like that. So we have this idea of things that are innately difficult and things that are innately easier. Now it does have, there is some truth to that. There is some truth that some skills and some facts and some knowledge and whatever are easier to pick up than others. But what we're really missing here when we say this and when we really believe this, what we're missing is that actually the key is not how difficult something is innately or on average, how many hours does it take to learn this thing? That is not the key, as far as I'm concerned. Having learned various of these areas and to quite high degrees, what I've found is that the key is really just immersion. It's immersion, it's, ex it's exposure, it's persistence. It's not, what am I putting my time into? It's not, this thing is more difficult than the other thing. It's that, no matter what you're doing, as long as you expose yourself to it, you persist with it, you put in the hours, you've got the right techniques, you're pushing through your limiting beliefs, and you're continuing, you're continuing, you're continuing through the obstacles that you're meeting, and you're trying your best to develop skills and competence in that area, you're going to find that no matter what it actually is, that you're going to be able to do it. Whether you think it's really easy to learn, really difficult to learn, whether you think you're capable or not right now of doing it, the key is really that. It's hours of exposure, it's hours of time put in, it's your training and the effort. That is the most important thing. So it's a very subtle difference. Now of course, we can look at a subject, like we can look at two languages like Chinese and French, for example, Chinese I studied to quite a good level, French, <laughs> not so much. Now listen, if you, if you look at official data for how long it takes for someone to reach uh, a general fluent level in Chinese, and the same for French, you're going to see that the averages are really a, a huge difference in terms of time. It might even be four or five times longer for Chinese. Right, so we might say that that is difficult because it requires more hours of exposure, it's more foreign to us. You know, if you're a native English speaker, going to French isn't such a big jump. As soon as you read French, you can already understand certain things. With Chinese, at the start, you can't understand a single thing. And it's just a completely new system. But to me, the difference in hours is not really a measure, of, it's not really a measure of difficulty. It's really just a measure of how much time do you need to put into it. Obviously with Chinese you need a lot more time, you need a lot more exposure, you need to get used to it, you need to practice more. Because even to just get the basics, you're gonna, it's going to take a while. 
But I want you to take on the principle that this isn't because it's inherently more difficult. It's just because of hours of time. That's essentially where the, the perception of difficulty comes from. And the reason I say this is because of something that happens when you reach a high level in something. As I've said, I've reached high levels in several languages. I've got a degree in maths, I didn't mention that. I also play pool and snooker to a higher level than most people. And I've, I used to play football when I was young, younger for many years. So I've explored many different areas and I've seen the same pattern over and over again. That's not to mention deep psychology, which is its own thing. I've seen the same pattern over and over again. At the start, you perceive the new field as a new subject to be very difficult because it's it's so foreign. It seems like a new area of life you've never even explored before. It seems so, you're just not used to it. You have no reference point. You have no skills built up there. So inevitably it seems beyond you. It seems sort of foreign, insurmountable, etc. However, what I've found is, with hours of practice, it doesn't matter what area we're talking about, with enough hours of practice in that area, the thing, the overall, the subject as a whole, and the specific skills that you find challenging or difficult or foreign in that particular subject or area, they all eventually, with enough practice, seem very easy to you. And, not only that, it's only that they seem easy to you because of the fact you've accumulated skills and you've exposed yourself and what I'm saying. You actually realise that, in its essence, the skill is very easy. There's nothing particularly complicated. Let's take the example of playing pool, for example. Now, when you first play pool, <laughs> well, I started when I was like five years old, so it's hard for me to remember, but, you know, you put your hand on the table, you're trying to move the cue back and forward, you're trying to look at the ball you're hitting and see where's that going to hit the ball that I'm aiming for, and how's that supposed to go towards the pocket? It's all just very disjointed, and you can't see what actually needs to happen. However, once you practice for months and years, you realise that basically all you're doing is hitting a ball with a stick against another ball and making it go into a, a pocket, as they call it. So what seems very complicated, it has all these different factors and it all feels very strange, actually in its essence is very simple. There's actually nothing really extraordinarily complicated about it. You're just hitting a ball with a stick, basically. But it's the being a newbie is what makes it seem like it's so difficult. That doesn't just apply to pool. What about languages? When you first come across a new language, it just seems weird. You're, you can't make the sounds, you can't remember. You're, you're like a child again, basically. What happens? With exposure, you eventually build up a bank of competency. And then you actually realize, hey, this is actually easy, and it's, in its essence, it is very easy. It's just making sounds and writing words and re recognizing words and recognizing what people are saying using those sounds and then decoding that and formulating a response to that if you're talking. The actual essence of it is very easy. It's the state of being a newbie that makes it seem so difficult. And that is why things are not difficult in and of themselves. First of all, because it's relative to your level, which is kind of an obvious thing. But it's also because no matter what you learn, you eventually reach a state where that thing is not difficult and you realize in its essence, it is actually quite simple. It's just that your, your vision was obscured in some way by the fact that you were a beginner in that area. So what does this mean for you? Well, what I want you to do is look at your current areas. What are you trying to do in your life? Things you're trying to learn, things you're trying to improve, um, businesses you're trying to start, projects that you're working on. Maybe you're at university, maybe you're uh, going back to university, maybe you're doing something in your spare time, maybe you're trying to pick up some new craft. What I want you to realize is that whenever you perceive something to be difficult, it's just a function of the fact that you're a newbie in that area. 
and that those people that you admire who are really good at it or seem really good at it and the state of being competent at it is really not a function of talent or of family or of genes or of luck or any of this it's a function of hours put in I want you to realize when you get past a certain threshold the whole thing will become clear it won't so, seem so disjointed anymore and all the fundamental skills will channel together and you'll realize the essence of the thing it sounds very esoteric but it's really it's describing something extraordinarily simple you realize that what the essence of the thing is and it becomes very obvious and apparent to you and it seems very easy I don't care what you're doing right now, what you're trying to work on, this will happen. This is one of the main reasons why people do not learn things, or they start and they do it for a few months and then they, they quit, because they're not willing to persist through that initial, I call it the beginner's hump, they're not willing to persist through the beginner's hump, because they have this vision or this view that the, the thing is inherently difficult and they can't get beyond that I want don't fall into that trap I really want you to persist I really want to remind you to remind yourself that nothing is inherently difficult it's all about persistence it's all about the hours you put in it's all about the effort and eventually you will come to realize the essence of the thing and how easy it really is all right I hope this really helps you with your current projects and pursuits and learning. Do check out my articles on the website. I've got a whole category of articles about learning and competence and they all go on the same line, encouraging persistence and good techniques and mindset and so on. So if you find yourself struggling with that, I'd be really keen to share with you what I've learned over the years. All right. Thank you for watching and listening and I'll see you next week for more.